Merci. Merci. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Philippe, for these uh, welcoming words. And uh, really on behalf of all the activists gathered here, congratulations to you, to your staff, to your team. Congratulations to Paul, because this convention is already a success. On behalf of Elio de Hoppo, president of the Belgian Socialist Party, on behalf of the 90,000 activists of the uh, Socialist Party, I would like to welcome you here in Brussels. It is a great pleasure. Uh, for us to see that this convention of the PES is taking place here, that there are 2,000 activists gathered here for, coming from all over Europe. It is really a success, and it really shows that we are willing to go for it. Elio Di Rupo, you know him, Paul, has always been present. He has always attending all the meetings. And by the way, this morning, Elio asked me to send you his best regards. And, uh, you know, he told me Paul will speak about his grandson, Lucas, and he will tell you that Lucas has decided to go for politics, but he's only 10. So he's a bit, a little bit uh, too young, you know, ready to start a political career. But hopefully we have Sergei Stanichev now. Um, assuming the presidency. You know, I am 40 year old. I come from a generation of activists who started to be interested in Europe 20 years ago. And, you know, 20 years ago, we were not that many. It would have been impossible to have a room as large as this one. And we were dreaming. We were dreaming that one day there would be a party of European socialists. We dreamt of this. But but you did it. There is a true PS today with activists, with local sections. with a wonderful study center, with uh, meetings like this one, wonderful places uh, to speak, to discuss with this wonderful campaign, the uh, campaign against the Balkenstein Directive, a campaign that we conducted together with our French and German friends, and we were able to win there. Today, the European socialism is a reality. The reasons why Elio de Rupo was not able to attend, of course, you know them. He is uh, trying to form a government in Belgium. I'm not going to dwell on Belgium. We're not here to speak about Belgium, but maybe just two words. Because today, uh, the words, the key words related to Belgium are key words for Europe. We were faced with uh, the nationalism, and today we have a people who believe that it's not possible to have several people living together in the same state. Some people think that it's not possible to live together if we do not speak the same language. Belgium, you know, is a tiny country, a multilinguistic country, and we have to prove that nationalists are wrong. But it's not all. We have also to face the right uh, parties, very arrogant, very sure of itself, willing to impose uh, its doctrine without providing us with the right to express ourselves. So we have to explain to the European citizens that we, the left, the socialists, have a major responsibility. It is a huge challenge because we are not that many. And George, we are very happy to see you here with us today because you have been fighting for so many months just to show that the left was able to assume its responsibilities. And it's a true fight. It is inspirational for all of us. Of course, 
in Belgium, we have a feeling that we share uh, your responsibility. It is a huge responsibility. It's not so much about forming a government to solve problems. We are here just to prove that we do count in Europe. The old right dream, which was uh, to place the market instead of governments, this uh, dream is almost coming true. The right, uh, together with the financial areas, is uh, placing uh, bankers at the head of governments trained by Goldman and Sachs, and they try to have us believe that these bankers are going to rule the countries. We have the political responsibility to tell our European citizens that we do not have to choose between populism on the one hand and technocracy on the other. In between, you have democracy and you have the left. Against these two, you have the European socialism. It is a message that we need to dare to express in front of the European institutions. Of course, we have to accept the budget, the budget discipline. As we are in the Eurozone, we need to follow some uh, budget discipline. We would like to reduce uh, the deficits because, of course, they are really, um, they have a very bad effect on uh, the overall economic situation. We've always uh, wanted to fight against these uh, deficits. We would like to have more convergence between the social and economic policies. And we are ready in Belgium to jump to a European budget, to jump to European taxes. We would be ready for that. But the European institutions uh, should understand uh, two things. First, if they send messages on what we, we should do, if they uh, always come back on the budgetary discipline, we are also listening to their messages. And actually, they are remaining silent. Mr. Barroso remained uh, silent on the tax on the financial transactions. The European Commission remains uh, silent on uh, the uh, regulations that should be related to the rating agencies. The silence of the institutions on bonus stock options, the uh, indecent salaries of these big buses who win in one year what a worker would never win in a lifetime. Uh, this is really terrible, and we have to do something about it. We cannot support Europe if Europe is only a machine that is there to destroy the social key, and if Europe is not the driving force that will put back some order in this continent. And we would like to tell Mr. Barroso and Van Rompuy, we do accept our European obligations. We know that a reform is needed. We know that a reform is needed to relaunch the economy, to increase salaries. But let's be careful. We will not allow a situation in which people will dictate what we have to do. You know, we need more discipline. We need more convergence, but no interference, because these institutions do not have the democratic legitimacy to tell us how we should conduct our social and economic policies. It is our task. It is up to us to assume our responsibilities. But, you know, for always, Europe has been the target of a, a xenophobic movement, of xenophobia, of a, a nationalistic movements. Let's be very careful because, you know, uh, trade unions are not happy, social workers are not happy, associations are unhappy. And if you go on with this image of a right wing Europe, a liberal Europe that is destroying our social interests, maybe Europe would fall in the these are traps. I believe that 
Europe really has to be kept by the European citizens. It has to be supported by the European citizens. Today, the right is attacking the social acquis. Today, the right is really attacking the community method with these bilateral summits. It is also attacking the parliamentary democracy. On the other hand, we are defending the social model. We are defending uh, the social acquis, and we will do so uh, for always. I know that sometimes you have uh, downturns, you have resistance moments and uh, victory moments. So now we have to face the wind and we have to resist and we have really to uh, stick to our aki. But of course, tomorrow, tomorrow, and in the future, there will be other victories. We will be together with our French friends, together with François Hollande, and we will be there also with our German friends, with our Italian friends. Uh, every day we are supporting Martin Schulz and our friends in the European Parliament defending the left ideas. And in this fight, Paul, we know how much we owe you, your wiseness, uh, your capacity, your warmth of uh, you as a talented person. You are able to give us a direction. We all know what you have been able to give us. So on behalf of all the Congress members, thank you very much, Paul. Tak, as you say in Danish, will be with you. We will always be with you, with your successor. And tomorrow, I hope that we will be able to say, may this 